Stephen Noble, good evening. Uh, obviously, we've come here today. We were going to discuss matters with you uh, at the game on Saturday, but uh, the last 20 minutes probably didn't put you in the best of mood. So here we are today at Corby Town. We want to discuss the future of Corby Town and, and some of the, the, the criticism that it's been levied at the board by the fans um, about the direction of Corby Town, maybe, and certainly about the finances at the club. Have you got anything to say? Craig, I've got loads to say. I mean, first of all, I mean, it's on everybody's lips, the performance of the team. Uh, it's not been great. Nobody, you know, we all want to win games. The performance that the, we got last year at the last one we took over was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. In fact, it probably pushed us to our limit, if, uh, if truth be known, because we took over the club and it was in, it was in a sorry state. I mean, if anybody doesn't believe that the club is in a sorry state, come and speak to us individually and we'll be plenty of time to talk to you about it. But we don't want to harp on about that. That said, uh, you know, the, the performance of the team has been poor. We did, in the summer, we spoke to Tommy about uh, what he was going to do going forward-wise. As a board, we don't want to tell Tommy how to pick the team. We wouldn't presume how to pick the team. But Tommy wanted to be loyal with the, with the supporters, eh, sorry, with the, the team that we had last year. So we gave him a 40% increase in the budget, which was stretching us, to be honest, in the predicament we were in. But we did give him that. He's been loyal to a lot of players. The ones that weren't here last year, uh, this year from last year were probably the guys that didn't want to, you know, were ambitious, wanted to go further, or wanted a lot more money than we could pay them. Anyway, I thought we started the season quite well. I think what we quickly found out that most of the lads weren't up to this level. And it's not a case of cutting budgets. So the budget actually went from a 40% increase to a virtually another 20% because we started, when the results weren't going too good, we started throwing a bit more money at it. And then a couple of performances, uh, myself in particular, went to North Ferriby. And uh, you can't always ask lads to play well. I mean, they, I don't believe any lad goes out there not to, to play well, but sometimes in football you just don't perform. But effort, we can ask for effort. And particularly that day, I thought we had to talk to Tommy, and Tommy himself, you, know, you look at the interviews, he's been pulling his hair out because he's not been getting effort. Now, whether he's not been getting that effort because the lads are struggling at that level, I think that's probably the, the truth because I don't think that we had bad lads in the squad. But they haven't coped. And when you're not comfortable, it does affect other things in your performance. So what we did was we've asked Tommy to more or less get value for money. Now, we don't want to do this in February or March when we've got no, no chance of staying in this division. So we did it when, on the back of a 13 game well, I couldn't see an end of it, to be honest. I've seen the heads going down. Lads weren't playing well. They weren't performing. They weren't trying. I, well, I, say, I wouldn't say they weren't trying. They were struggling. So the manager's job is to manage the team. It's our job to manage the manager. You know, so I think he needed help. Uh, we're out there trying to get much needed revenue into the club. We wanted value for money. And that, and that value is in the in the performance, going out there and working and grinding. So he made some changes, he sat down with a few lads, for whatever reason, they didn't want to stay, didn't want to fight, or they didn't want to go out and loan. A couple of them went out and loan initially. I could, I could name one lad, he went out and loan, played a few games elsewhere, has come back. And at uh, Staley Bridge, he was probably our best player. You know, so if you want to do it, you can do it. I think what we did is we just uh, we maybe maybe pushed Tommy a wee, a wee bit without interfering and naming names. Because I wouldn't name names. I wouldn't do that because I would never shut the door on any players. But it's no coincidence that most of the lads that he has got, that have went, or whether he's got any of them or they've walked, they're not, we haven't got teams batting down the doors to get a hold of them. You know, they went to the level below. So I think they found our level. What we've got to concentrate on is our level and try and get players in here that will stay in this division, and that's what we're doing. Now, when guys come through here and pay their 12 quid, because I've seen comments about, uh, just pay your 12 quid and be grateful that you've got a team. Well, we are grateful. They should be grateful. We're grateful that we've got a club, and we're working hard to keep the club at this level. But that £12 
can only go so far and we need those 12 pounds somebody else said that you know fans will, will show up with their feet and not come well we're trying to do something about that now that's why these changes have come about I think we are getting the bad result on Saturday I think we're getting a bit more positive result uh, positive reaction out of, the, out of the guys we've got some players that are coming back yeah I think uh, I think short term but we've tackled it or we're trying to tackle it the proof in the pudding will be the result but I'd rather do something about it now than wait to March or April where we've got no chance because we want to stay at this level because the ambitions of the club are long term we are here for the long term Paul all the board we're all here for the long term and that includes looking after the first team now and looking after the club's future now what we did we made a couple of decisions when we came in Instead of putting all our eggs in one basket and chasing results week in and week out with all the money, the majority of the budget still the majority of the money still goes on the budget. But we had to put money aside to develop the club long term, and that's an informal academy, a full time academy. Now I've been out here today. I watched them win uh, one three one. There's some great great prospects out there. I granted they're not they're not ready for the first team at the moment but they will be in the future. So our job is to try and manage our budget, our budget, not just the playing budget, our budget for now and for the future. The, the development, we've got a lot of developments happening up here, the changing rooms. We're trying to make the club more financially viable. Uh, that means not putting up a hand to the local authority all the time. And to do that, we have to, we have to prove ourselves to the, to the fans. We are, I think we are proving ourselves to the fans. I've seen a comment that we're not up to the National League standards. I think that was aimed at us. Well, I think we are. We're not a laughing stock. I don't think we're a laughing stock. I'm certainly not laughing. I'm working hard. And we do respect, you know, the fans' views. I know that it's frustrating when you see things on the, the social forums. Uh, I can take criticism. I don't like young lads, 18-year-olds, 17-year-olds getting criticised. You know, not individually. We can take it as a team, criticise their performance, but don't criticise them individually. I don't think that's right. But that said, looking forward to the future. 30 kids, we've got full time here. Tommy's working with them. Have you seen them? I've seen the intake on the 2nd of September. A lot of them were average players. I've seen the team out there playing against Muzzy Isits, which is, is Soccer Academy. One of the best in the Midlands and beating them 3-1. So the future is bright, in my eyes, the future is right for the, bright for the football club. And the other thing is, we're not going anywhere, we're keeping the club here. We have got quite a sound foundation, we're not desperate for money. Uh, money's tight because we're still paying debts from previous regimes and we've committed ourselves to payment plans. So over the next couple of years, money will be tight. But we're paying the bills, we've got a first team out there that's the budget's not the biggest in the league, nowhere near, but it's not the smallest in the league. So we want to get in value for money. The league doesn't lie, we were sitting near the bottom of the league and we were paying more than some of the clubs around about us or some of the clubs higher us. So we want to get in value for money. I think we will get value, for, we'll demand value for money because we can demand effort. If I pay my 12 quid going through there, I'd want to see them in Corby Town shirts showing a bit of effort, running for 90 minutes. Now, we'll demand that. Anybody knows me, Paul, any is in the boardroom. James, you know, we're winners. We want to win. That's on the pitch. We know what's happening there. Uh, thanks for bringing us up to date with that. Obviously, off the grass, looking at the uh, the building, there's been quite a bit of talk around the, the bar and its closure and it still being a council building. Can you th shed any light on that one? Well, the bar's now open. There was a question. We're, 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 we've got... Uh, we had... Obviously, you know, there's, there's new changing rooms to go in there. There's four changing rooms, two for the community. So we, the, the previous regimes were granted money to get this uh, building up and running up to a certain spec. We are struggling at the moment with the amount of money that's been allocated to, to get to, up to that spec. But we are working with the local authority to try and resolve that. But one of the things when we had uh, a surveyor in was something was highlighted. It was a, a bit of paperwork that we hadn't had from the council. Uh, with regards to the upstairs bar, that's why we had to close it. 
you know, which was really frustrating because we've got a good deal with the brewery now. We are getting we're getting money from all revenues of the of the 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 football club. You know, whereas before when we came in, none of the areas were making money, so we are getting revenue. So it was really frustrating, but to be fair, it's been resolved. Long term, we want to develop the building. Everybody knows the condition of the building. We have been charged to get that building up to scratch with a pittance, you know, so uh, we haven't shirked it. You know, we haven't said, no, nah, we haven't sat and moaned about it. We've just got on with it and try to make the best of it. And that's what we'll continue to do. Because what we've got to do, and all of us within this boardroom are trying to get the future, you know, on, on, just not on the pitch, off the pitch, we're trying to get that up to scratch, you know, with the facilities. Because the better that we can make those facilities out there, the more money the club will make. Then you're talking about national conference or whatever, sustaining ourselves at this level, not looking just to survive in the division, looking to challenge. Because I don't want to just be in a division where each year you've got, you know, you're in the bottom half of the division. We want to try and challenge. Now what we're doing up here is, is looking at ways of generating money, whether it's the full-time academy, because that can generate, it opens other doors for you with all grants from the FA Premiership or whatever, you know, so we're looking at all avenues, you know, and uh, yeah, you're right, the pavilion could be a good form of revenue, you know the plans of trying to develop that into more community use, so we can use the facility well, just uh, one, one day every fortnight. So that's on the pitch, by the pitch, uh, let's talk about the boardroom, how's the feeling in the boardroom? And, and how's the sponsorship deal so far this season uh, tied in with, of course, uh, match ball sponsorship and, and game sponsorship and revenues like that? Well, it's been a, a, a yeah. Again, we've been we've had good support from a lot of small businesses in the town. Uh, obviously, we want more. We're always wanting more. Uh, time has been a big restraint. There's not many of us in here, you know, and we're all volunteers. We don't get paid. Uh, salaries at the football club. We're all all doing what we can in here. It's virtually a full time job, to be honest. But yeah, and to be fair, we've had, uh, we've we've recruited some decent people onto the board, uh, commercially wise. You know, that are giving us different avenues, and I think uh, they're paying dividends. You can see by the amount of boards that started to go up. I mean, last year, in reality, most of the sponsorship that we had out there, or match balls, or and we never get any money off that way to give them away because the previous regimes had already had that money. So we were, we were, uh, if you like, we were making up for the comp, you know, the money they put into the club previously. So there was a lot of that and then this year they, they never renewed, you know, so we're, in reality we've never had any money off of some of them. But we've replaced those, slowly we've replaced them. The other good thing is the, the supporters have been, you know, the supporters have been fantastic. I mean, all right, it's dropping off a wee bit at the moment because we have went through a, a sticky spell. But I don't just mean coming through the door and spending the 12 quid. They've supported us in other areas. But I get phone calls with people that, you know, through their, through their work. When we picked up Amarai just lately, that came through a supporter talking on his work, you know, putting the company on to us. So all avenues uh, revenue are accepted, you know. But, uh, yeah, it has, been, it has been hard that as well. We had a lot of... When we first came in here, it was the Magnificent Seven. And a lot of the lads have fell by the wayside, not because they weren't up to the task. It was because it was impinging on their, their uh, full-time jobs. You know, so there's no way any of us can do it if it's putting your, you know, your, your, your businesses in jeopardy. So we have lost one or two by the wayside with that, but still supporters of the club. And, you know, we're working, the ones that are left, with a few additions, we're still we're still battling. We can always use more. We can use more volunteers out there because we have got some cracking volunteers like yourself, Michael, Pete the Roll on the pitch. Look at that pitch. You know, it's fantastic. You know, so we have got a lot. I don't want to go through all the in case I miss anybody out. But we have got some good volunteers we could use more. Eighteen months in the chair as chairman, still happy? Would you would you pass on the chalice to anybody else? Would you want to give it away? At the moment, no way, because I've still got challenges and there's things I want to do at the club. I want to build a, a good infrastructure at the club, football infrastructure. Uh, but, but meaning that I don't want to just to have a football team each year that you have to throw a massive amount of money just to exist. What we have learned 
I've gone back to that comment, we're not uh, National League standard. I think we are, because we go round and last year spent in the Southern League. I thought we were better than most of the clubs in the Southern League. I don't mean on the pitch, I shouldn't say I'm better, but I, th I thought we, you know, what we did in match days and how we prepared was as good as anybody. Granted, this division, there's a lot, there's a lot of big, big clubs at this division, but so we're learning. But there's a lot of the clubs, I think we do things as, as well as them, so I think we could, off the field, we can survive at this level. The one thing that we didn't have, and we are tackling now, is a football infrastructure. You know, and that's with the youth team, an under-18s, uh, an academy, a junior academy. Now, with the academy, I think we have to build our fan base. Somebody says Corby's a growing town. It is a growing town. So we should have, I think we should have 1,200 people. We took 1,200 people to pool all the way to pool. So if we can take them to pool, I think we could get them here. Now, to do that, we have to get someone to the community. You know, with the, with the full-time academy, we're going to be going into the junior schools and working with the kids. Our players are beginning to the junior schools. Now, this, this happened many, many years ago when I was young. Yeah, a bag of Golden Wonder Crisps and a, and a drink of juice when you went down through Occupation Road. But that was because guys for Corby Town came into the schools. Now, we've got to get back to that. They do it everywhere else. Years ago, I remember seeing a Histon Town van outside St. Patrick's School as Histon Town were coaching in the schools in Corby. In the schools of Corby. You know, it's no way are we having that. We've got to, we'll be in the schools of Corby. If we go in there and we get the kids, we get the youngsters, they start coming up here, they might bring their mums and dads. So we're tackling that side of it as well to try and get supporters through the, not just get supporters through there, we've got to give them a wee bit of, when they come through they've got to get value for money. I go back to, they can't always get great football teams, but they can get honest, hard working teams. And that's a good foundation for any football team. If we get guys out there that are going to work, the football will come. We've seen that last year. Looking back at the football, huge game Saturday against table toppers Nuneaton, a, a town which has always been linked with Corby, uh, generally through uh, employment, what with RS and, and other companies beforehand. It's going to be a tough job, isn't it? Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, good. I'm looking forward to it. I've been in Nuneaton before, uh, and they're a, they're a good club, well-run club, well-organised club, and they've got a good infrastructure. So. When I go to these places every other Saturday, I'm looking at their infrastructure to see how we're comparing with that. This year, we're a wee bit short. We most got Boston last week. I thought, I think Boston are a fantastic football club. Great infrastructure, what they're doing in the community, and that's why they get big gates. Big club, but they get big gates because they are working at it. So we go to Leipzig on Eaton. Great, we can go there and get three points. But I'm on duty. The board's on duty when we go there. Because we're there to try and improve our club. Every time we represent the club, we're trying to improve it. Uh, yeah, we've got a lot of big games coming up. That's why, I go back to what I spoke about at the start, that's why we've made the changes now. Because I don't want to go here. I don't want to go to Nuneaton or anywhere else and have a North Ferriby. North Ferriby is like a, a, a stab in my side here. I'm never, I don't, I'm not involved with teams that go out on the pitch. And I'll say it now, go out on the pitch and lay down. And we did at North Ferriby. That was the lowest day. I was the lowest day in 18 months. Uh, and we've had a few of them, to be honest. You know, the FA Cup never helped us. FA Trophies never helped us. You know, we've not had the we've not had the best of luck when it comes to uh, getting money. I don't think luck's got anything to do with it. We've been playing teams that are lower than us two years in the trot with FA Cup. You know, it's uh, I, I was both home ties. To me, we never worked hard enough. You know, so there's a bit of responsibility on the players. Tommy knows the responsibility. He feels the responsibility. That's why that guy is going nowhere. You know, we want him at this club because we believe that that guy will build us the infrastructure that we need. And all of us are of one in here. So, uh, yeah, bring him on, Nuneaton. Steve Noble, thanks for talking to us.